want to drop with you guys three of the biggest contributors to binging, overeating, this like out of control feeling that people get when they're eating. Now there are some deeper physiological things I'm not going to get into. These are the biggest hitters. Biggest hitters by far. And number one is not eating enough protein and fiber in your diet. I'm like, I'm just going to be real with you. I don't care how much you think you're doing this. Most people, I get people, they're all into like pasture raised, grass fed, high quality food, all this stuff. That's a very typical client for me. And when I have them actually track just so we can see, it's, it's such low protein and pretty low fiber too. So guess what keeps you full? Protein and fiber. And guess what most food that's yummy is? Fat and carbs. Fat and carbs. Think ice cream, uh, cookies, uh, chocolate, <laughs> chips, right? Very low fiber, very low protein. So guess what? You can have freaking chips. I eat chips almost every single day. But how do I do it? I make it in a smart way. First of all, I eat like Siete Foods chips because they're high quality stuff, right? It's avocado oil, grain free chips. And I dip them generously in cottage cheese so that I can boost my protein content with them. Because guess who can eat probably two full size bags of Siete Foods chips? Me. And I'll probably still be hungry like an hour later. <laughs> I guarantee it. Okay. So when, think of when you eat like a big old chicken stir fry of veggies. How much are you really going to be able to eat of that? Why? And think about how long you're full after that because of the protein and fiber. End of story, period. So most people are eating low fiber and low protein. And that's why you're overeating. And that is why most people are overweight. End of story. If you were filling up on protein and fiber, it's almost impossible to overeat. So that's like huge. So take a look at it. When I'm talking about fiber, I'm talking about vegetables, pretty much. Yes, fruits and some starchy vegetables like potatoes and stuff like that have fiber too. But the big ones are vegetables, okay? So that's the biggest thing. <laughs> I would overeat and binge too if all I was eating was like chips and chocolate and processed all day. Everyone will because protein is the most satiating of all macronutrients it takes a long time to digest. It actually burns a lot of calories to digest and it's not an energy source. So it's unlikely to be stored as body fat, very difficult to store it as body fat. I will like keep saying this a million times. I'm like, holy effing, bleh. you don't have to be so psychotic with every little thing. If you will just eat more protein and fiber, fiber turns into this gelatinous gel that slows everything down and expands in your stomach. And guess what? The short chain fatty acids from it help you have good mental health. And all these things and fibrous foods like veggies are chock full of nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. So your body's like, good, we got folate, good. We've got all the vitamins and minerals we need. We don't have to go looking for more food. So it's like, mm. I'm like, when are people going to start freaking listening? When are you going to actually do it? Okay. Like it's, 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 it's an easier goal because it's proactive. It's, I need more protein. I need more fiber. How's that for a freaking change when you're trying to lose weight? Kind of freaking refreshing, right? And if you will actually do it, everything gets easier, okay? So I'm just like, holy effing shit balls. <laughs> like, just eat more protein and fiber, and this whole thing gets easier, and you will be full more immediately at the end of your meal and for way longer, way longer, okay? So that's a big thing. Low fiber, low protein diets, every freaking human being on the planet is gonna overeat and binge on shit because they're not full. <laughs> okay. The second thing is good, bad thinking around food. I talk about this all the time, but guess what? Somebody always says to me when they're talking about how they, I always binge on all the bad foods. I'm like, that's why you're binging is because you have that mentality that those foods are bad. And guess what? Your little inner five-year-old rebel is going to get those things that their big mean mommy or big mean daddy inside of them is telling them that they can't have. You're screwing yourself over if you're like, don't eat sugar, don't eat M&Ms, don't eat candy, don't drink soda. Can we get past this mentality? Does it look like it's working? Does the restrictive mindset, is it, if you're in a restrictive mindset with food and some foods are good and some foods are bad, how's that working for you? It doesn't work. It creates this, I gotta have that thing that I've been restricting. Guess what? I know damn well that I could go have like an entire cheesecake right now if I wanted to. I love cheesecake. 
And every once in a while I choose to indulge in cheesecake, but because I know I can have it 24 seven, it doesn't hold power over me. But when I'm sitting there like, don't do it, Tara, don't get cheesecake, don't get choose cheesecake later. Now it's holding some freaking power over me and my inner rebel comes out and wants cheesecake from this bizarre behavior, this bizarre mentality that I created in my mind. So remember, you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. No foods are good or bad. Just some of them give us results that we don't want in our lives as much. And sometimes a little bit of chocolate or a little bit of whatever is no freaking big deal. But if you start guilting yourself about it, guess what? I was listening to a lady on Tom Billy who said that we get a dopamine hit off of guilt. Whoa, think about that. So kind of interesting, right? So that's, a, that's another big hitter. If you think any foods are bad and you're being like good by eating your salad. The other thing is like you remove the joy of this amazing salad or this amazing nutritious meal when it's like not as fun and exciting as the bad foods, right? Y'all got like, most of y'all got bad boy syndrome. <laughs> like the girls who like the bad boys, <laughs> you got that going on with food. It's weird, stop. No foods are good or bad. And the more, if you can't get past this mentality, which you can, it's a choice. You have to repattern your mind. But if you can't get past this mentality and all these foods are bad and restricted, you're going to be the one binging on those foods. But if you remind yourself every day, you can eat them all day, every day, they will lose their power. And now you become an adult and you can make mature decisions. Like, I know I can have that, but what do I really want? And then it's like, okay, I do want to have chocolate every day. For me, it's like, that's why I eat built Bars. It's a yummy little treat or I have keto cereals on hand. If I want something like that and it's still high quality stuff that gets me the results that I want and fulfills those kind of cravings, right? There's plenty of shit like that out there now. Yeah, steak and butter, like find joy in the healthy stuff. Healthy fats, healthy proteins, healthy, pro you gotta be a little, like, sometimes we get in this, like, okay, I'm, I don't mean to knock on my dad, but one time, like, with my dad, he was like, oh, I don't know how to cook. I've been a bachelor forever. I'm like, do you drive a car, dad? <laughs> you can figure out how to make food. <laughs> it's not true. It is not, if you're saying I can't cook, that is freaking pathetic. Then you should not be driving a car or, like, operating a computer. <laughs> it's one of the most basic human skills in the world. So if you're saying, I don't know how to cook, that is a victim mentality, freaking learn. It's not like we all came out of the womb knowing how to cook, <laughs> right? It's not freaking rocket science either. And actually it can be fun when you start looking at it in an exploratory, creative way. So figure out, yes, me as a registered dietitian, grab a book, read, like follow a recipe online. You'll start to get it. It's like, oh, rosemary and thyme go good together. Maybe I can throw that on shit. And you just start making up stuff. Just start making up stuff. Be like, this is a piece of meat. I wonder how I can get it in my body. <laughs> just like, right? And that's the thing is like, I think we got so much in this, like you can do recipes and you can look up stuff. I have not cooked from a recipe in like probably like a decade, very rarely. Or I might skim it and be like, yeah, okay, I'll just make it my way. I just make shit up. Just make shit up. Make it up. And there's plenty of shit on social. I don't follow the recipes though. I'm just like, okay, oh yeah, okay, sweet potato noodles with some, okay, pesto. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm just freaking mess, play with it, right? So that's the other thing. So we got two now, right? We've got, backing up, we've got, you're not eating enough protein and fiber if you're binging, I promise. The other one is, good, bad thinking around food and your little inner five-year-old's coming out. And the last one, um, shit, hold on. What was it? Let me think. Oh, it's this one. Yeah. Pattern for obesity, <laughs> not eating, going on these really long stretches of eating. Cause now you're winning. Now you're winning. You didn't eat all day. Guess what? That's not winning. That is not, you will guaranteed quote unquote binge because you're freaking starving right? It's fine if you want to go for a long time without eating. But if you're like in this mentality of like, I'm winning, the less I eat, the better I'm doing. And then you keep going off the rails and eating all these things. It's, it's just part of a restrictive mindset around food. There's way too many people covering up disordered eating with fasting these days. Yep. Because guess what happens? They're using it as a backup for like when I overeat and binge and go off the rails or in this weird like, oh, I'll just fast this all off later. 
Fasting is a terrible strategy. Like, I'm talking like 24 hour fast and stuff like that. That is a terrible strategy for weight management. If you're doing fasting in, in, in an effort to increase your health, cool. But if you're doing it just to like, so you can binge sometimes and offset the damage, it's weird disordered eating patterns. I like intermittent fasting because one, I'm just waiting to get hungry after my workout. And two, I'm not eating late at night so that I can sleep well. Do you see the mental the differences? I'm not like trying to like starve myself because I'm like winning. You know what I mean? That's not a loving relationship with the body and it creates all kinds of weird disordered patterns. And a lot of people are on that grind where they don't eat all day and they freaking go to town at night. And the, the worst is that second dinner thing. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> Your body composition will change. Your health will increase. Your mood will increase. We're like little toddlers that don't have good bedtime routines. I'm serious. Most adults, we're acting like little kids that finally get to stay up late and do all the things and eat all the things we didn't get to do as kids. Like we got to grow up around this and be loving towards ourselves and give ourselves what we really need. And it's freaking sleep. You're not winning life if you're getting up at four and you're going to bed at midnight. That's not winning life. You're winning life. You're getting up at four, but you're going to bed at eight. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, that starve myself all day and then just stay up all late eating crap all night is like, meh. all right, let's see. Let me read some of your guys' comments. I was on a little, little tirade, little tirade. Um, the best way to learn is fail and learn from mis mistakes when cooking. Yes. I have made some weird crap. Guess what? If you cook eggs with purple cabbage, it turns blue. And you put some guac on top and it tastes really good and it looks freaking horrible. And I never <laughs> posted that on social, but it tastes good. <laughs> put some curry seasonings. I'm, that's, I'm serious. That's the kind of stuff that I'll make. It'd be like eggs, purple cabbage. I'm like, mm, curry, guac. <laughs> Just play with it. All right. Mariah said, do you believe in how some people are naturally a moderator and some abstainer for those with an addictive personality? Abstainer food addiction is a thousand times harder. This is how I feel. I feel like that abstinence thing is what creates the addictive personality with food. I really do. Because it's this mentality of I can't have that, I can't have that, I can't have that. So then when I do have that, I go off the rails because I have a restrictive mindset around that thing. I don't agree with like how some people can have, I think some people can have small amounts of things in moderation because they don't have a restrictive mindset around it. If you look at children that have not been exposed to an, like a restriction around food, sometimes when they're really hungry, they might eat a bunch of cookies. Other times when they're not hungry, they might have one bite and go run and play with their friends, right? That is, nat that is natural. And I think that the reason adults, like I have to completely abstain from it altogether, I really do, with food anyway, food is life. Like addicted to food, nah, there's something deeper psychological going on there. And I think that the, the mentality of like, I can't have that and I don't trust myself, I don't have control, all of that deep inner shit is what's causing this overreaction of food. There's anybody that I've ever, I mean, I've worked with so many people with binge eating. It's like almost everybody. And when you get to the root of it, it usually started in childhood, early childhood, or at the very latest in their teenage years for most of them. And there's some deep psychological trauma, unhealed shit. Somebody said they were chubby. Somebody said, I wonder when you're going to get chubby, stuff like that. And that's when that shit started way long ago. And so that little inner child that's still wounded is still at play, still running the show because Dr. Bruce Lipton, our main guy on the subconscious mind says that most of your subconscious is that 95% of your actions every day are run by your subconscious and that your subconscious is mostly formed by age seven. So we have a bunch of wounded inner children walking around as adults <laughs> and we got, to, we have to go back to that stuff. So what did you believe was true about you? What did you believe was true about food when you were a little kid? That shit is still running the show. I promise. Unless you have done a lot of deep inner work, it's still running the show. Um, let's see. Mia, early time restricted feeding, get eat early and stop early. Watch your body change fast. Yep. 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 I don't eat early. I mean, I'm up so early. I, I personally don't do that, but if I'm gonna like go one way or the other, it is definitely earlier <laughs> than later. I used to not be like that. Y'all know 
I used to be like eating ice cream and chips and stuff watching Netflix at like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, fasting has become the new eating disorder. Yeah, it's gotten in excess. Even Dr. Pompa, who was like the big, a big promoter of fasting, is like, whoa, I'm getting really freaking concerned. You guys are fasting way too much. And I know I'm in the, I'm in the freaking trenches with people, right? <laughs> like I am in deep in the shit that they aren't telling anybody else. And I am telling you that most people who are doing a lot of this like big fasting and stuff, they're using it as a way to be able to offset the damage of going off the rails because they have a restricted personality. There are some people out there that are fasting in a healthy way, but a lot of people, it's like, if you're really honest with yourself about why you're fasting so much, it's because you're trying to not be fat. And that is not a good reason to fast. Fasting is for health optimization, not to offset binge eating. I'm with you. Almond butter and sauerkraut is a face snack or side dish of mine these days. <laughs> I love it. All right, Mia, that's my daughter. Nothing's off limits to her, and she'll just have a bite of cake and go play. Exactly. I know some of y'all moms are like, how can they not want this? It's because they don't have a restricted mindset around it, so they're actually going off what they freaking feel like. Um, can you talk about for the advanced ones that are already on it with the protein and fiber, how eating too much slash only protein and fiber and even volume eating actually messes up your satiety cues. Well, I mean, if you're only eating, as, as I'm trying to understand what you're saying, if you're only eating like protein and fiber and you're not having enough health, healthy fats or carbs, then yeah, you're going to be wanting some of those. One thing that I learned from doing my bikini competition is like, it was so low fat that I was like, if you're not eating enough fat, your body's going to take care of you. That's why you have so many like bikini competitors binging on peanut butter because it's the one like fat source that they're like allowed to have sometimes. So they got it in their pantry and their brain is like, you freaking need fat now. And then they go binge on it and then they hate themselves and all this stupid bullshit when really like their body's just like, hey, you dummy, stop starving yourself. You need fat. <laughs> and we wonder why these women lose their periods. It's horrible. Sorry, it, it is. It's horrible. Um, like eating only low calorie foods to be uncomfortably stuffed. Yeah, no, I mean that. That's kind of still uh, resembles a very restrictive mindset around food. Like I can only have protein and vegetables, so I don't get fat. No, you can also have healthy fats and some healthy carbs. And when you eat, when you eat, if you eat a meal that has fat, protein, carbs, and fiber in it. You are going to feel amazing. Your body's going to be like, yes, well done. You did it. Now, of course, if you're on a keto phase, you got high blood sugar or something like that. Granted, you're not going to have the carb part of that. And you probably will feel better because you're not going to have blood sugar spikes and drops. But that's for people who need to do keto who have blood sugar dysregulation or something else they're helping with, um, helping heal with keto. Uh, uh, big buddy Cisco, what's up, dude? Um, wait, are you the DJ guy that was at uh, Reggae Rise Up? that like messed with our minds and told us that, um, Bruto Mars was there. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, fasting is not bad. Fasting is so good for you. So, so good for you. Um, but that being said, there's some people out there that have taken it too far and they've now kind of developed this binge and restrict pattern of eating where they like binge and then they try to like fast it off and binge and try to fast it off. If it's that kind of mentality, now we're getting into disordered eating. Fasting in general, super good for you. That's why every religion and, and you know, ancient civilization over time has had some sort of fasting pretty much. So it's good for you. It's just not in excess. It's just like training. Training is really good for you. In excess, now we start to get negative returns. And for women especially, I just have to say, too much fasting. Dude, our bodies are way too complicated for this overstress. So a little bit of stress for stimulus change, awesome. Too much stress, stuff starts breaking, right? Just like overeating. All, too much, too much of anything is not good. Um, Mia, I see all of this in continuous glucose monitors and their cortisol and stress is so high it shows in their glucose. Yep, because when you fast, your, um, your blood sugar will go up. Adrenaline and cortisol go up when you're fasting. So if you're fasting a lot, you're going to be in that high cortisol, high stress state and then you wonder why you're feeling like a manic crazy person all the time. <laughs> that was you. 
I still, I was telling my kids about that. I was like, he messed with our minds. <laughs> I'm all looking around. Quick story, this this guy on here. <laughs> if I discuss a DJ and he hosted this after party at Reggae Rise Up. He's like, he's like, guys, uh, Bruno Mars in the house. And then like, we were all like looking around. He's like, don't take pictures, blah, blah, blah. He was just messing with us. <laughs> I was all looking around. I'm like, Bruno Mars is in here. That was a joke, right? Because I definitely didn't see Bruno Mars. <laughs> I thought maybe he was a J-Bug fan. <laughs> All right. Fasting makes me lose hair. Yes. Thank you for adding that. Um, my hair girl said that to me because I used to fast a lot when I was in that keto, super deep in the keto biohacking world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my hair girl was like, she's just this like, you know, 25 year old girl. She's like, wow, your hair is so much nicer and thicker now that you stop fasting all the time. I didn't even know she knew that. She just saw that on social. I was like, hmm. She's like, yeah, you got all this like regrowth and stuff since you stopped fasting all the time. Right. So too much. No bueno. Cause I was doing like a lot. I was probably doing a 36 hour fast at least, you know, probably once a month I was doing like a 36 hour fast which meant I would like stop halfway through a day, not eat for an entire day, go work out the next day, right? Because it was kind of in the biohacking world, this was getting kind of popular to like see how you could do, you know, how your body could adapt and that kind of stuff. But it just became too much, you know? So, um, Carmela, thank you so much. Okay, so that's all. Wrapping it up. If you want to not be binging all the freaking time, eat more protein and fiber, not only protein and fiber, <laughs> also fat and carbs for most people, unless you're doing a keto phase. And then uh, get out of this freaking good, bad thinking about around food and grow up and remember that you got a freaking card or cash and you can go buy whatever food you want all the time. And if it's in your house, you can eat that too. And whatever you want, all you want, all the time. And when you really know that and you stop doing this stupid, like, don't eat it, don't eat it, don't eat it thing, you'll wise up and grow up into a mature energy and say, I know I can have that, but what do I really want? And this is what I call being your own mom around food because a loving mother energy is I want what's best for you. So when we want what's best for us, we will make good decisions. Um, Hey, big body Cisco. Yes, absolutely. Message me and we will talk. Um, if you're interested in keto, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you, but some people love keto. Some people don't. So not everybody needs to do keto. Keto is definitely not the only way to lose body fat, right? Some people will respond really well to keto. Some people will not. Right. So depends on the person. Um, and then, yeah, that last one is stop trying to like starve yourself all day and think you're winning. And then you wind up in the McDonald's drive through at night, getting your double thick milkshake or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Just eat real food from nature. If we only had food from nature, I would not have a job, at least not on the nutrition end of things. And like maybe for people who want to build muscle, even on workouts, we would be so healthy. You are not going to overeat on like shit that would grow out of your garden and like a cow. <laughs> you would not. So think about that. The more we can eat food like that, the better off we are. And if you are going to eat something like chips, make it smart. Dip it in some cottage cheese or somehow put some chicken on it. I like to get those banana plantain chips, put some chicken on there from a rotisserie chicken. So those little guac cups. Now I got protein, fat, and carbs instead of just eating a bunch of plantain chips that are just carbs and fat. You see? You get in my drift? You can have some of these things. You just be smart about it. Be your own best friend. Be nice to future you. You mean hungry as crap if all you eat is plantain chips by themselves. Mariah, um, any tips on how to be more present before we eat our meals? Um, so kind of the process that I go through is what sounds good to me right now, right? It's important to eat, like do that. It's okay to be like, what, what do I actually want? A lot of people are in this like should, should, should. You guys know that saying, don't should on yourself. I should eat this right now. Sometimes I don't freaking feel like a veggie stir fry at all. And I'm not going to have it. So in that moment, I might have like just some hummus and chicken and like almond house. What are those things called? Something almond. I can't remember what they're called. Those really good cheddar farmhouse cheddar <laughs> almond crackers. Please tell me you guys know what I'm talking about. Simply organic or I can't remember the brand. Stuff like that. Right? So honor what sounds good. Maybe sweet potato noodles. Maybe a steak right? Some honor what sounds good. So that's my first thing is like, what actually sounds good to me right now? And then 
what, how can I fulfill that in a way that is supportive of what I really want? Right. And just think creatively. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? A salad actually sounds really freaking good right now. So I'm going to get a rotisserie chicken and some arugula and avocado. Oh my God. I had a, um, ahi tuna like bowl. Um, I got it at Smith's. It was so freaking good. I like devoured that yesterday. It was so good. So yes, it had some sauce that was probably canola oil and whatever, but it mostly had like fresh fish, fish and rice. And guess what? I barely got a blood sugar rise. I actually checked it because I was curious because I ate so many carbs in one sitting, but I don't know. Could have been the day. I'm pretty insulin sensitive. So think about what sounds good to me right now and what is a nutritious way that I can fulfill that. And then if you're going to have some freaking chocolate or donut or whatever, just effing have it. And don't get into this crazy, like, I'm being bad mentality. I promise you, you're going to eat more. And actually really taste it. Like, how is this really? You know, and if you are in a mode where you're like, okay, I'm having pizza. Like, I love pizza. I'm never living a life without pizza in it. Like, good, good pizza. By the way, if you live in Utah, Tenny's cauliflower crust pizza is freaking insane. Has anybody... (laughs) At this it is so good I got some with my friends when they came for my book launch party <laughs> my friend Barton ordered more <laughs> while we were sitting there eating it he's like oh no we're gonna need more of this it is so good heads up Tinny's pizza um but what was I gonna say oh yeah so if let's say it's regular pizza okay and I'm like I know I'm, I could eat so much pizza and not get full it's not really going to do my body that many favors. So I'll have like a salad with it with like chicken and all kinds of nutri- nutrient dense stuff with the pizza. So I'm getting full on fiber and protein and I have some pizza. You see how I think this is how I roll. And then I try to stop eating a few hours before bed so I can, my body can recover well, sleep well, go up, wake up. Now I got a bunch of glycogen and my muscles and liver to go crush it at the gym and just wait till I get hungry again. So Anyway, binging. Biggest thing I'd say, the, those first two were the biggest ones, is just low protein diets, man. Low protein and fiber. You're sitting freaking duck. Think Anybody like Krispy Kreme donuts? Who's going to be honest and tell me how many Krispy Kreme donuts they could actually eat before they felt full? I'm curious. I feel like I could eat a whole, I mean, if my my taste buds could handle all the sweetness, I feel like I could eat an entire dozen of Krispy Kreme donuts and not feel full. Okay. So like, that's why, because it's just empty. It's just carbs and fat. There's no protein or fiber in that. Yeah. 20. Totally, dude. They're like air. Same with cereal. Like cereal does not fill you up at all. It like vanishes into thin air. Low protein, low fiber. So you want to make your life easier, boost your protein, boost your fiber. And then the other thing is you got to get out of this good, bad thinking around food. Okay, that's it. That is my message for tonight. I hope this is helpful. I'm not a fan of Krispy Kreme, but if it was ice cream, I could eat it all. Yep. Yeah. And mostly carbs and fat, right? Maybe a teeny bit of protein. Definitely not a lot and definitely not fiber. So... Yeah, so if like you're going to have protein, it's like maybe, I mean, sorry, if you're going to have ice cream, it's like maybe I could have some something that's rich in protein and fiber before, if I'm really hungry right now and then have some ice cream. <laughs> you're going to eat way less. <laughs> yeah, it's like they melt in your mouth and are gone so fast. Seriously, that's how everything is that is low in protein and fiber. And guess what? You don't want to eat protein and fiber as much. You know why? Because your body's trying to survive You know that we're fighting our own biology in this day and age, right? Our brains are wired to want fat and carbs paired together, especially. That's why they taste so good because it's so energy dense. We used to be fighting starvation. Human beings evolved on fighting starvation. So those things taste really good to us so that we can actually maybe store some body fat so we don't die. So you got to be like creative with it. Because we could just eat fat and pro- fat and carbs together all day long. French fries, Frosties, chips, cookies. There's a reason these things taste good to us. It's not just about the science, food scientists and taste optimization. If you take regular potato, a regular potato, and you bake it and you eat it plain, is that nearly as good as chop frying up little pieces of it in avocado oil? No, it is not. 
So carbs and fat, our brains are wired to want those things together. So we have to be intelligent enough to figure out how to manage this modern day lifestyle that we luckily live in where food is abundant and we have to find ways to pack in the protein and the fiber in a way that tastes good to us and we want it. So figure out what that is for you. Salads, scrambles, like I'll roast big old sheets of cauliflower and broccoli to have them on hand for when I'm like in the mood. It's really good if you do Primal Kitchen Buffalo sauce on your cauliflower, by the way. Okay? So we got to figure out ways to do that. And guess what? You ain't going to build no muscle if you don't eat enough protein. I, like, totally respect how anybody wants to eat, but a lot of, not all, there are some vegans that have good muscle mass, but they're very proactive about making sure they're getting complete proteins. I look at, excuse me, I look at a lot of vegans and I'm like, If they're not proactive about making sure they're getting complete proteins, I can see in their body composition that they eat low protein. It's just how it is. You can be 140 pounds and like 50% body fat. You know that, right? Just because you're technically small and the number on the scale is within range doesn't mean that you're metabolically healthy. And that's vegans and regular not vegan as well. Because most people are not eating enough protein and it's very hard to build muscle mass when you eat low protein diets. The hardest thing for me is I want to find balance, but I also get caught up in thinking of natural evolution in today's unnatural synthetic environment. Just do the best that you can. If we get all worried about everything, we will stress ourselves to damn death. I just do the best that I can. And if I'm going to go have sweet potato fries at some restaurant that I know damn well they cooked them in canola oil or some other crappy oil... I'm just going to enjoy the freaking sweet potato fries and I'm going to dip them in that chipotle mayo that's canola oil and I'm going to enjoy every second of it because most of the time I eat really freaking clean. And you know what that creates? A really peaceful relationship with food where you're not overstressed about it all the time. (laughs) How do I find balance with a food that was literally created in a lab and paid by scientists whose only job was to find out how to make this more addictive for our biology? Well, make your choices. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to eat those foods, but like, for example, Siete Foods chips, they're good quality stuff. They're chips. I guarantee you they have a food scientist on there to make them taste good. Right. So I still eat those. Do whatever you want to do. But like, it's, it's about like, if you read a book called the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton, you literally change what happens in your body as a result of what you're thinking. The, all day, every day. Think about it. If I told you right now that I was going to put you, pull you on this live with me and I want you to take your shirt off and show everybody your belly. <laughs> I bet you that thought could create a chemical change in your body. Wouldn't it? Imagine you're doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, you would release stress hormones. So when we eat food and we send it down with, this is hurting me, this is bad. Your body's like, okay. It it does have an effect. That is what the placebo effect is. Now, of course, there are like some, yes, like some food sensitivities and all that kind of stuff. But think about that. I get really annoyed with some of the fear mongering and the nutrition world. We got to be careful with the messaging. It's good to know. It's good to have that information. But we can't walk around being scared of everything. It's going to manifest in our biology. So do the best you can and like let Jesus take the wheel kind of mentality. Um, what do I think about vegan protein powders? Um, I think they're good. I think they can be good. Usually they're pretty good about making sure that they have, um, complete proteins with the proteins that they mix together. Um, it's more mental than anything else. Yes. Everything is more mental than anything else. Everything. Oh yeah. Okay. Shapeshifter. I got to hit this real quick. The number on the scale. I'm like, Please give me, help me channel this the right way to get the freaking point across. The scale is the worst measure of any sort of progress in your body ever. Take your scale, go get a hammer in your garage and go to town. It'll be really fun. Release some anger that you have from childhood or something. That thing, I just had a woman comment on one of my posts saying that she gained 10 pounds of muscle, but it's messing with her because she weighs more on the scale. And I'm like, God damn it. She just made massive progress in her health, her longevity, her metabolism, her hormone cascade, everything. She made massive progress in this effing bullshit 
programming that has been on women and men too, but especially on women for so long is uh, robbing her of the ability to see that she just made tremendous increases in her health. That's effing bullshit. Yes, I want to freaking swear. This pisses me off so bad. I just got back from Metabolic Health Summit and I shared about this where they're talking about they're taking old women with breast cancer and having them do resistance training because of the metabolic upgrades that you get when you build strength and muscle. And guess what? Most women in that age group, they're not going to do it because they lived in the age of Twiggy and all this effing bullshit that's been programmed into women that we should basically wither away until we freaking disappear. And men who support this, you guys are wounded as F. (laughs) Everybody's bought into this freaking lie and it is so sad. Muscle and strength are fundamental aspects of a healthy metabolism. When I'm talking metabolism, I'm talking more than like fat loss. We think that's just about like how much you burn fat. No, your metabolism impacts your mental health, the entire hormone cascade, neurotransmitter cascade, everything in your body. And we're sitting here telling women they shouldn't have it. That is one of the most the biggest atrocities towards women is a crime against women to tell them that they should not have a basic fundamental of health so that they can be sexy for men. Go on TikTok, go look up some blogs of what the lives are like for these women that are in the media that are projecting, putting out this image. It's fuck effing horrible. They are starving themselves to death. And then women are like, I want to look like that. And guys are like, that's hot. I want that. And it's so freaking sad. So the scale, think about it. You can gain muscle and make huge strides in your health. And the scale might go up a little bit. And you're like, oh, I didn't do good. Who gives a shit? I have no idea what I weigh. No freaking idea. I don't, I don't care. It's about how I feel in my body, how I'm performing in the gym. We don't even think about how we feel in our body. If we will get rid of the stupid scale as this outside measure and just like close your eyes right now, close your eyes and be like, how does it feel living in my body? How do I want it to feel living in my body? There you go. You got all of it. Everything you need to know is right there. That's it. So I cannot stand the scale. The scale makes people psychotic and most people don't know how their body works. So they don't even know that when you eat a little bit more carbohydrates, you, you hold on to more water or you ate a little bit less carbs and you let go of water and it's like, yay, I lost two pounds. You did not. Oh no, I gained two pounds. No, you didn't. Anything within a five pound range is very temporary and usually water. I hate to break it to you. So that's why you need to get off that stupid thing. <laughs> it's such a terrible measure. If you want to really dive into what your body composition is, go get a freaking DEXA scan. Okay. Scale is bullshit. Such bullshit. I'm so tired of seeing women's lives get robbed from them over this. And anyone who really loves you wants you to be healthy. So... (laughs) If you got some asshole boyfriend or husband that's like pressuring you to be skinny, 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 just know that he is wounded and (laughs) he's projecting his shit on you. You go be healthy. You go thrive. Your mental health depends on it. Your mood depends on it. Your longevity, your hormones, every single thing in your body, your blood sugar management. You want fat maintenance, like being able to maintain a healthy body fat to be 1 million times easier. Go build muscle, go build strength. Oh no, that might make me gain two pounds on the scale. Remember what I said, go in your garage, go find a hammer. Okay. (laughs) All right, I'm done. I'm gonna start winding down so I can get to bed. Thank you for joining me guys. Have a great night. Bye.